losing time, I'm fading fast I just wanna make it last Try to let go of the past I close my eyes, embrace the blast Sleepless nights and headaches stack Restlessness to hell and back What's my purpose, what do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack And sometimes you just gotta believe There's something that'll give you relief There's something that'll have what you need what you need We're broken, it's tragic We're not all elastic But maybe there's magic Believe you could have it And I know of sadness The anxious and panic The infinite vastness Of all that is blackness How many times I've absentmindedly moved the mouse pointer to the bottom left corner of the screen and clicked, expecting to see the start menu pop up. Muscle memory is hard to break. If the taskbar icons were larger, it'd be all too easy to say this particular update in Windows 11 feels very Mac OS-like. And I can see why some would even say that right now in its current form. But the first time you click and the start menu shoots up from the start button, it's very clear you're still using Windows. Live tiles are no longer present on the start menu. Instead, you'll have to get accustomed to using the new widgets panel that slides out from the left edge of the screen. If you have a 2-in-1 or a laptop with a touch screen, you could swipe from the left edge towards the middle of your screen to view the widgets. The top of the panel is where you can add one of the 11 different widgets currently available, ranging from weather and stocks to traffic and sports scores. There's even a family safety widget so you can keep tabs on your kids' screen time and approve any requests. Unfortunately, you can't add any third-party widgets to the panel, so you're stuck with what Microsoft includes. I never really used live tiles in Windows 10. I was not a big fan. I actually found them more annoying and more work to manage than they were worth, but the change to widgets is something I've found myself using, if for no other reason than to skim the never-ending newsfeed that's below the widgets I've already customized. I do wish, however, that there were more options for widgets. One of my favorite changes in Windows 11 is the new settings app. Instead of the main screen showing buttons that take you to each category and subcategory of a particular setting, the left side of the app has every top level setting, such as apps or system. When you select a category, the list remains visible while you adjust any settings to your liking. For instance, selecting personalization from the list of settings, which also has new themes for light and dark modes, allows me to quickly change the desktop background, accent colors, and the like, with without reloading the entire settings window as was the case in Windows 10. The new Snap Assist tool is another update I'm learning to appreciate. When arranging windows on your desktop, for example, you can still drag the windows to the edge of the screen to snap them into a specific position, but in Windows 11, you can now hover your mouse pointer over the Enlarge button to see various layouts for you to pick from. There are several options, such as a 50-50 split, a 75-20 split, and a grid layout which lets you view up to four different apps, each taking a quarter of the screen. 
What's more, if you move away from the snap group and start doing something else, you can return to the same layout by hovering your mouse cursor over the apps icon in the taskbar and selecting the previous layout. Docking and undocking your laptop from an external monitor will now remember your desktops and window placement instead of forcing you to rearrange your apps every time you connect or disconnect. One more feature that I think is worth calling out is the new chat app. It's part of the Microsoft Teams, but it also allows you to send and receive text messages with your contacts, even if they aren't using Microsoft Teams. I was able to exchange messages with my wife directly to her phone number, who can then reply directly from the messages thread on her iPhone, no app required. For as much as Microsoft has talked about gaming at press events for Windows 11 and the new Surface devices, there really aren't a whole lot of new features related to gaming in this update. There are a few though. First up is Auto HDR, a carryover feature from the Xbox Series X and S consoles. And if you have an HDR monitor, you should notice an immediate difference in how games look thanks to Windows 11 automatically converting SDR images to HDR images for a brighter, more vivid picture. Next up is direct storage. Once games are updated or released with support for direct storage, your PC will use the GPU to load images and assets directly from an NVMe SSD, something that is usually done by the CPU. The end result? Faster load times. Unfortunately, no games currently support it thus far. Microsoft says the tech will come to games in the future, but there's no word on exactly when. Hopefully soon though. Finally, Microsoft has combined the Xbox and Xbox Game Pass apps. That means you no longer need to rely on two different apps for all your Xbox gaming needs. I enjoyed the merged interface and frankly, there was never a need for two apps. The three of those features aren't exactly the most exciting updates for Windows 11. That said, there's potential for direct storage to be an impressive update and welcome addition to the new operating system once games are updated or gain support. But there are some caveats you need to know, namely that you'll need an NVMe SSD with one terabyte of storage and a GPU that supports DirectX 12. I do like how there's a single Xbox app now, instead of an Xbox app and an Xbox Game Pass app. I can now easily find the games I want to install and play, or start a cloud gaming session with just a few clicks. Of course, you'll need an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscription to use Xbox Cloud Gaming. And remember, Xbox Cloud Gaming is still in beta, and there are surely some keeks and quirks that Microsoft is still ironing out. For example, during my time testing, I was frequently disconnected from the game and kicked back to my desktop due to connection issues. That happened even though I'm using a 1.2 gigabit per second hardwired connection. Thankfully, I could immediately jump back into the same game and pick up where I left off. It wasn't too much of a hassle for a slow paced game like MLB's The Show 21, but it'd be a different story if I was playing a fast paced game like say Gears 5. What about performance in regular non-cloud games? To test for differences between the operating system, I went through IGN's typical benchmark process with Windows 10 and then again after updating to Windows 11. I didn't see any drastic improvements in gaming performance. The only outlier was the Metro Exodus benchmark going from 59 frames per second to 82 frames per second. I triple checked the settings and results on all of the benchmarks before installing Windows 11 and everything was correct. I am at a loss as to why there was a huge leap in performance here, while the rest of the tests all showed numbers that were within a few points of each other. Beyond our standard benchmarks, I spent a lot of time playing Gears 5 and MLB's The Show 21 via Xbox Cloud Gaming as well as dropping in on Warzone. Warzone would average between 110 and 120 frames per second with all of its graphics settings maxed out on both Windows 10 and after updating to Windows 11. Not everything that Microsoft announced that was coming to Windows 11 actually shipped. Android apps are the most noteworthy example. Windows 11 has native support for Android apps, meaning you can install and run Android apps directly on your PC without any extra software, but the functionality isn't live yet. A forthcoming update will add Amazon's App Store, which has its own collection of Android apps that you can install and use. It's the same App Store that Amazon uses on its Fire tablets. So while the selection of Android apps isn't as robust as it is for the Google Play Store, there are plenty of options. Another feature that's missing is Cortana, and it's going to stay missing. It's a conscious decision that Microsoft made. And you know what? I'm perfectly fine with that.
Windows 11 looks fantastic, but that's where the excitement stops. There aren't any immediate apparent gaming improvements and it's not clear exactly when we'll see them. Combine the nearly identical performance and the fact that some features like the refreshed Microsoft Store are making their way to Windows 10 soon and there's very little incentive to rush out and upgrade right now. For more Windows 11 coverage, keep it right here at IGN.